we award it for the second time during the year. So my first question is, what has changed in these 15 years from 2006 uh, in the design of these two engines, 9 and 18 liters? When we began the, uh, the emissions era in off-highway off engines, about 15, 15 to 20 years worth of the last uh, time has been really focused on how do we stretch uh, and, and meet the ever-changing emission standards around the world. Uh, it's been an absolute focus for us. Uh, it's very important to us and to our customers uh, to be compliant. Uh, and it's really driven a lot of, of, of our engine development over that time. You know, post uh, final tier four and stage five, I, I think we arrived in a new place where we could bring a little bit broader focus to what our customer needs are. Um, a little bit of the, the sort of heavy development of after treatment um, and, and compliance topics behind us, a real new focus on, on customer needs. And that's really changed a lot. Um, you know, developing engines that really are focused on those customer needs and not so much on, on the, uh, the certification and compliance. Of course, they have to be that, they have to be compliant, but we've had more time to focus on what our customers want. You know, in the actual technical area during this time, a lot more simulation uh, has, been, has, has been utilized, you know, combustion analysis, finite elements, um, CFD, uh, you know, 3D printing is becoming a reality for many of our prototypes and packaging. It really allows for assessment of these requirements, these customer needs, even before we do full prototyping. If you can tell us some, something more about 18 liter, so designed from a blank page, basically. We're really excited about the engine. It's, you know, it will be the largest engine in our lineup. Uh, <clears throat> it is going to extend our power, uh, our power availability up to 650 kilowatts. And, you know, we're very excited to kind of build on that. Uh, a few years ago, we announced our, our new 13.6 liter engine. Uh, it's really, these two are very much a family of engines. They share a lot of architectural concepts. Uh, you know, this engine, it's a rear gear train engine, uh, really utilizes our model-based controls, um, focusing, real focus on service and repairability. The, the rear gear train is really focused on, on, on sound and reducing torsional vibration, really about the customer uh, experience. Uh, model-based controls are really important. Um, you know, they, they provide the foundation for us to do you know, market leading uh, connected support for our customers. John Deere is well known for its channel and for its customer support around the world. Uh, so model-based controls really is about understanding uh, from a model perspective, what's going on inside the engine, being able to translate that into better ways to support our customers. And, and on top of that, any reduction in, in sensors offers an improvement in, in reliability. You know, electronic engines, provide some challenge on reliability. Anything electronic, electrical, you know, has to survive in an off-highway environment. So reliability is very important. On the repair, uh, on the, the last item on repairability, we really focused from the very early days of the design of these engines uh, around what are the top 20 engine repairs and how do we significantly reduce the repair time for these types, these types of repairs. So, you know, what, if you're asking for sort of the emphasis of, of the, the, the uh, DNA of these engines, that's really, really what it's all about. Basically, one of the goals would be no downtime. Basically. Absolutely. You know, oh. in, these, in these large engines, you know, the, the customer need is uptime. And uptime is paramount for Deere as it develops uh, all of our engines. The 18 liter is the laser focus. We are talking about the diesel of the year 2021, and so we will talk about some applications. So, could 18 liters prove to be a competitor in repowering uh, this kind of enormous machine, such as Maxi dampers, for instance? And what other applications would lend themselves to such a hybrid? Very good question. You know, the, the concept of electrification is becoming very prominent in, uh, in, in the automotive space, of course, uh, and, and finding its way into on-highway trucks as well, but it's very visible to us in the off-highway world as well. Uh, in fact, 
you know, <clears throat> I think the off-highway world will have a challenge in the future to manage the, you know, the, the major, major power elements that go on in these large uh, uh, applications you described. You know, the mechanical, hydraulic, uh, electrical power systems need to be balanced for the, for the optimized performance for, for our customers. We, we have already developed uh, and, and offer sort of a scalable modular power solution, electrified power solution for the future. You know, our electric drive drivetrain lineup includes uh, pretty high, uh, high speed electric motors, fairly compact in the 100, 150, 200 kilowatt range, pretty high power. Um, they're controlled by our own electronics within John Deere uh, electronic solutions. They're integrated with um, John Deere sort of pump drive and transmission solutions to really provide a flexible powertrain portfolio. So we're, we're talking about engines today, but there's many uh, manufacturers looking for more creative ways to, to provide power to the ground or to implements. Uh, and, and our electrified uh, solutions really provide that opportunity. You, you probably already know for many years, we've had a, a hybrid 644 and 944 loader in the marketplace, very successful. Um, and of course, now, now we've had some more recent success with, with offboarding power uh, to a slurry spreader, which won the, the Agritechnical uh, Agri gold medal in 2019. So uh, we're pretty excited about not only the engines we offer, but the electrified um, sort of combination of, of uh, flexible power solutions that we have as well. You just opened a window on the future because John Deere Power System is a big engine manufacturer, but is part of the family of the very, very, very big machine manufacturers. So how does John Deere Imaging IoT and Industry 4.0 apply to engines, considering the experience and synergy as a machine manufacturer? M many of our investors have seen uh, a, a recent announcement of John Deere having a new smart industrial strategy in the marketplace. It's been a, 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 a big focus of our management over the last year to, to, to really unlock the value uh, of our customers using technology. We're known for, for, for big iron and we're known for our ability to support customers, but we're recommitting ourselves to even more technological advancement. You know, if I could use some examples here, uh, if you think about technology, uh, you know, we are absolutely committed to and already heavily involved in connectivity to our machines. Uh, we've, we've spent a, a hefty investment connecting many machines over the past years, and we're starting to get a payoff for that investment. You know, we, we see uh, new solutions like our John Deere Connected Support has been out there for a few years. It's, I think we lead in this area. Our ability to assess if there are issues in a machine, in a connected environment, uh, we're, we're regularly informing dealers uh, that a customer it may not be down, but a customer may be facing an issue soon, and that that, that uh, dealer needs to make contact with a customer in order to to keep that customer uh, up and running. You know, we're learning with this connectivity we've created with our machines in telematics. We've, we're learning more about applications. We're learning more about how the different applications of <clears throat> our customers uh, are operating, allowing us to sort of look at the, that data and optimize how we develop uh, the, the engines and the power solutions in the future. It allows us to look at um, regional differences uh, in, in how someone in an emerging market may use a machine differently than, than uh, we would uh, here in, in North America, for example. Um, so really, that connectivity and telematics really gives us a lot of tools to work with. And then combined, combined with the model-based controls we talked about earlier, it gives us an opportunity to really continue to evolve the prognostics of, of, of engines that we have out there. We're constantly able to develop new ways to know that an engine may be facing an issue, uh, a wear out issue, uh, and, we're, and we're constantly sort of evolving that library of, of 
of things that we're learning about the engines and able to tell the dealer to make contact to, to a customer. So we're really excited about connected support. You know, John Deere absolutely known for its, for its um, network and, and its, and its uh, ability to support our customers in record times. And this is allowing us to push that into a prognostics rather than diagnostics world. Thank <laughs> you.